Many movies about AI exist nowadays, but for some reason, I prefer more classic AI films. It's not without reason. I find classic AI films have more plausible and meaningful stories. One such classic AI film is the one you're watching in this recap. Its story is very engaging, and most importantly, the use of AI in the story is not excessive or exaggerated. Additionally, the film's premise is very clear. Watch until the end, and if you share the same opinion, please write it in the comments. The movie begins in a mining colony prison where hundreds of prisoners are forced to labor all day. When a large machine called the Crusher Pit breaks down, a guard calls over a prisoner named Kai Cortland and asks if he can fix it. After a few minutes of tinkering, Kai gets it up and running again. Suddenly, the alarm starts to sound to announce the addition of a new prisoner. When they see who it is, all the other prisoners start to rebel, attacking their oppressors with brute force. Seeing that they are outnumbered, one of the guards activates the control of the crushing pit, reversing it so that the chains around the prisoner's legs drag them towards the pit. To save his life, Kai is forced to cut off his own leg to avoid being dragged into the machine hole. Encouraged by adrenaline, he then jumps on one leg and deactivates the mechanism, stopping the other prisoners from being pulled to their deaths before collapsing. When he awakens, he finds himself being watched over by Tobias Hatch, who tells him that he knew his father and that they had fought together before. Hatch regretfully informs him that this mission was the only one they weren't perfectly prepared for, and when Kai uncovers his leg he finds that Hatch has already given him a mechanical prosthetic. Hatch plans to break into another prison located on a ship, but he needs more information. After a pause, Hatch tells Kai that their enemies had caught his father and were planning to make an example out of him on Liberation Day. Hatch tells Kai, an expert pilot, that he can help his father by hijacking an important ship and retrieving the data carried inside, promising to pick him up and take him to his father as soon as the mission is complete. Kai agrees to the mission and is launched into deep space on a ship called Arrowhead. He is put in suspended animation for most of the trip and wakes up early to hack into the ship's records through the comms. Hatch informs him that all he has to do is plug in the device, and the wrist link will do all the work. While downloading the files, an information pop-up appears, informing him that the system would be vulnerable if he continued. When he informs Hatch of this, Hatch tells him it's only temporary and to go along with it. Once the download is complete, Hatch tells him there is some flare outside the ship and to hold tight until they come for him but asks him to send the files in the meantime. Trusting him, Kai starts the transfer but the system failure makes the ship unstable, stopping the file transfer and ejecting all the safety pods. Hurrying towards the shuttle bay attached to the mothership, he locks himself inside and makes his descent to a desert moon below. The shuttle crash lands on the planet, but Kai has not suffered any damage. The preliminary reading on the ship warns Kai that the moon's atmosphere might be toxic, with symptoms that might lead to paralysis or death. The AI suggests Kai find a new source of oxygen because the one on the shuttle is depleted. A male voice starts to transmit from the comms and after announcing that it is Norman Oleander, he informs any survivors to get there as soon as they can. Hearing the announcement, Kai heads out of the shuttle to the main crash site. On his way, he sees one of the parts that had landed before the crash and hurries to check for survivors. In one of them, he finds a woman and brings her back to the shuttle. When she awakens, Terran logs into the shuttle systems. Still suspicious that Kai had yet to be in the launching pad with them, Terran tells him that the launching pods will leave soon and explains that they should go there before they do. After walking for a while, they can see the crashed ship at a distance and notice a strange obelisk a few distances from it. Terran deduces that Kai is working for Hatch and tells him that Hatch was an evil man who used to raid colonies before the war, explaining that he had killed thousands of people. Kai ignores her saying that it was just propaganda. Knowing that the surviving people on her ship won't let him in, Kai leaves. He returns to the shuttle in an attempt to fly it and reach a nearby station. When he tries to activate the shuttle, it informs him that he doesn't have the right codes to pilot the craft. Having no other choice, he quickly returns to find Terran, who is almost at the shuttle. Before they get there, the ship starts its ascent, leading them behind. While they are desperate, trying to call out, something they are unable to see comes out of one of the holes and drags Kai inside. Left all alone on the rocky moon, Terran decides to explore in hopes of finding another survivor. As she walks around, she is shocked to see the naked form of Kai on the ground, covered in goo with his leg completely healed. She takes him back to the main ship. She tests his blood and finds out that his body has formed a symbiotic relationship with another organism that healed him and made him immune to the toxic environment. Once he wakes up, Terran asks him some questions about how he feels and about his experience. He is unable to tell her anything but that he feels good. He questions her about their resources on the ship, and she confirms that they don't really have any. 
Leaving the shuttle, they walk around trying to discover something they can use for sustenance and stumble upon Norman Oleander, who has been covered in some cocoon. They drag his body into the shuttle and get the AI to scan it, allowing them access to fly. Once they have the ship up and running, Kai refuses to have Norman Oleander come with them because he is sure it would risk the chances of saving his father. Terry mentions that she knew Oleander had protected her father when she was younger and tells Kai that the man she knew back then would never leave someone behind to die. Outside, Norman Oleander awakens, disoriented and paranoid. He starts yelling about how Hatch is going to kill them all, then picks up a gun on the floor. Before Kai can stop him, Oleander shoots and kills Taryn. Angry at the loss of Taryn, Kai beats Oleander to death before realizing that he too, has been shot. When he awakens, all he can find are the remains of two dead bodies. Entering the shuttle, he discovers that it is almost out of power because it has been left running for 34 days, which is how long he was asleep. The AI also warns him that it detected Oleander's heartbeat while Kai was asleep. For the next few days, Kai works tirelessly to replace the power to the shuttle so he can get to New Holland before his father's execution. One night, as he lies asleep, he starts to feel unbearable pain. Managing to pick himself up and head outside, he feels his body undergo a terrible transformation. The following day, he finds himself naked on the sand and deduces that the same symbiotic creature keeping him alive had caused him to transform when his emotions weren't stable. Returning to the ship, he tries to keep working on the power source, but the AI informs him that Liberation Day was celebrated two days ago while he was transformed. Devastated by his father's loss, Kai gives up and lies on the ground, resigned to accept his fate. While he continues to live on the moon, he decides to control his transformation so he won't lose as much time again. One night, as Kai converses with the AI, it shares a theory it has been thinking about. The AI tells Kai that it believes he and Oleander share a common symbiotic condition, but Oleander's symbiotic relationship seems to be permanent. It explains that death is part of their cycle now. Even though the first time Kai killed Oleander was three years ago, his consciousness seems to live on in a new replicated body. To test the theory, the AI suggests that Kai could kill himself. Listening to the machine, Kai does so. Just as the AI said, he is resurrected into a new body. Putting the carcass on display, he uses it to lure the Oleander creature into his trap and shoots it. Finally able to acquire a sample, Kai hears a sound like a monster growling reverberating throughout the place. When Kai speaks to the AI about this, it mentions that it heard the sound when Kai killed himself as well and assumes the moon acts as if it's mourning every time one of them dies, activating its power to heal them. A few seconds later, the AI mentions that it would like to speak about Terran, but is only able to do so if prompted. In a moment of impatience, Kai demands answers, and the AI responds by playing an audio recording, unveiling the night Terran was believed to have perished. However, the evidence shows that she underwent her first transformation and cleverly managed to escape. Kai is overwhelmed by emotion and can't believe that the AI kept this information for so long. Although he is sad that he wasted so much time that he could have spent looking for Terran, he finally has a purpose now and wants to find her. Kai then takes some parts from the ship and builds the AI body so it can move around freely. He sets out to look for clues on where Terran had gone and begins an expedition. He then stumbles upon a large tunnel that seems to branch out the deeper they go. After they walk for a while, the AI starts picking up strong electromagnetic impulses emanating from within, continuing inside. Kai finds Oleander's original bodies attached to the walls as if the moon had made them part of itself. Kai suffocates Oleander to put him out of his misery, killing the beast as well, but he is unable to do that to himself. Leaving the tunnels, he finds clues that Terran did manage to launch herself away and gets excited. While Kai and the AI are conversing, flaming items start flying from the sky. Hurrying to one that lands nearby, he recognizes it from three years ago and is confused about the fact that it's just landing now. The AI discloses classified information telling him that the moon is under an experiment for time dilation. A few minutes later, Hatch arrives on the ship and tells Kai that it's only been a few minutes while Kai spent years on the moon. He tries to explain to Hatch that the government was planning to build a prison on the planet, creating thousands of pieces of equipment in just days due to the time difference. The unsurprised Hatch already knew what was going on and wanted to utilize the moon's strange qualities for himself. When Kai refuses to answer, Hatch knocks him out. When Kai awakens, Hatch shows him Terran, who had been kidnapped while trying to escape, and tells him that he will kill her if he doesn't surrender the information. Staring him down, Kai tells Hatch that the info is in the research probe outside. When Hatch heads out to retrieve it, it's blown up by the bomb that had been inside the automatic foot they had given him before he grew his own back. Inside the shuttle, Kai transforms into the beast and kills all of Hatch's men.
When he struggles to return to his human form, Terran starts to calm him down, giving him back some control. Kai and Terran are happy to be reunited once again and head toward Hatch's ship, which is now theirs. When the AI asks if he's going to save his father, Kai disagrees saying that he's going to save everyone, and that is how the movie comes to an end.